Resort and Casino, we like to celebrate life's little moments. Oh, and the big ones too. Because around here, when you're completely in the moment, that's when the magic happens. Come in and find your moment at Wind River Resort and Casino. Happy Tuesday morning to you. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Krueger from Weather and NorCal. So glad, glad you could join us on this Tuesday morning. You decided to at least take Coffee with Krueger off on Labor Day, but still, of course, gave you your three updates uh, yesterday uh, morning, noon, and of course in the evening as well. How you doing on this uh, short work week we have in store for us? Boy, bottom line is this. We have got some changes in store for us from what we saw yesterday. And all i got to say is this, if you enjoyed yesterday, you're not necessarily going to enjoy today or the rest of the week because we've got, you know, the unofficial end of summer occurred over this past weekend, right? That's when people consider the last vacation before summer really ends. And they call it you know, the unofficial end of summer, but it's going to feel more like summer again going into this week. In fact, let's go ahead and take you right into Kruger's Quick Cast. As you know, uh, we have two different sections of this show. Number one, the Quick Cast, which for those of you that are just want to check in with the forecast and then go on with your day, you can very quickly watch the forecast and then be ready to go. All right. And then for those of you that like to get the whole story behind the forecast, you can do that. So let's get you right to the Quick Cast here for today. Temperatures out the door this morning. You know, not bad in Chico and Redding in the upper 50s, still low 60s though for Red Bluff and Corning at the current hour. We're seeing it about 40 degrees for Chester and Quincy, uh, 38, 38 in Alturas, and even cooler in Bernie at about 37 degrees this morning. And we're sitting upper 40s, low 50s out along the coast right now. There's a look at your visibility, and you can see it looks pretty good out there. There's a look at the elk country just north of Trinidad. We are starting off with some patchy fog out there. Uh, there you can see that's what it looks like in elk country. Looks like there's some of that patchy fog there, but not so much in the way of patchy fog as you head north into Crescent City. We're looking at the Crescent City Harbor District Cam uh, and just a beautiful sunrise. But if you look off in the distance on that image there, you can see the fog bank uh, just off the coast there. So it wants to come onto the coast, but it's having a hard time doing that. So I'm sure many people will certainly take that. Taking you back again to the Elk Country Cam. Let's see if we can see any uh, elk out there. Do we see any elk? I don't. That would be fun if we did, but uh, overall, it looks like we're gonna be looking at a gorgeous day, including the coast. Let's get you out the door this morning, and we are expecting to see mainly sunny skies eventually, again, some patchy fog on the coast. Otherwise, temperatures this morning, mid 60s for the valley, low to mid 50s for the coast and inland, excuse me, for uh, the uh, mountains. Uh, a little bit cooler up in Modoc County, should be in the upper 40s uh, for your eight o'clock morning hour. And of course, I was talking about the heat that is returning. There is a heat advisory for the areas in orange for Wednesday through Friday for the Sacramento Valley and the surrounding foothills for western Siskiyou County for Thursday with highs up to 105 degrees. Now, some of you, and this happens a lot, even during the, the, you know, the peak of summer, a lot of people roll their eyes at heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, the works. Here's what I want to just kind of point out a few things. Number one, here are the National Weather Service risk, heat risk guidelines. And a couple of things that we look at here is this. How unusual is this heat for this time of the year? Keep in mind the normal high for this time of the year in Reading is about 95, 96. So with this heat wave coming through, we're going to be at least 10 degrees above normal, if not higher than that. We also take a look at the duration of the heat, including both daytime and nighttime temperatures. Do we cool off at all at night? Uh, do we get to see a, a bit of relief from the heat as we go into the overnight uh, lows? Also, if those temperatures pose an elevated risk of heat-related impacts based on data from the CDC. Basically what that's saying is, for those that, are, that have health issues and can't deal with the heat stress as much as other people can, such as the elderly, for example, young children, infants, 
can also have a problem with this heat. And we can't forget about our fur pets, fur, furry, uh, fur babies as well, right? We can't forget about our pets. They too can be impacted by this heat. I notice, I mean, even when it's only 85, 90 degrees, our dog has a hard time with the heat. I was up in Mount Shasta yesterday where the temperatures weren't nearly as warm. And we were out in the sun and she kept pulling me, pulling the, the uh, leash to get to a shaded area. So they know when they need to cool off as well, but you need to watch for them, make sure they got plenty of water in the works, right? So again, these are the things, again, when we roll our eyes, we think, well, it's going to be hot, it's been hotter. And it certainly has, but we're reaching that time of the year, it's typically not this hot. Uh, and this is quite an unusual heat wave uh, for this time of the year, or let's just say not unusual, but not as common. All right, let's take a look at future cast and uh, taking a look at any chances for rain today. No, not even much in the way of fog out along the coast. You're looking at plenty of sunshine there and plenty of sunshine elsewhere. Let's take a look at those temperatures out there for today, about 100 degrees, give or take for the valley, mainly 80s, upper 80s for the higher elevations, let's say mid to upper 80s. But there are some spots that will be warmer in the low 90s, places like Weaverville, 94, 93 for Hay Fork. And look at the coast, you're looking at temperatures around 70 degrees. So we look at our 7A outlook and the peak of the heat wave will be around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? That's when Reading will be at 105 to 106. For Red Bluff, 102 to 104. And for Chico, 102 to 103. But temperatures start to drop after that. It's still going to be a hot start to the weekend, but much like last weekend, we started off hot and the temperatures gradually dropped. That's what we're seeing here. We're back down to the mid-90s on Sunday and low to mid-90s by Monday of next week. Let's take a look at your 7A outlook for the coast. Around 70 through Thursday, mid to upper 60s for Friday through the weekend into early next week. By the way, it's not just the heat that we're watching, but also the potential for showers and thunderstorms. We're going to take a closer look at that potential and just what those chances are in our deeper dive forecast coming up in a little bit here. Taking a look at Siskiyou County, Modoc County, and the Eastern Mountains. Of course, there's that chance, especially on Friday, even the uh, Susanville, maybe even on Saturday. Temperatures peaking around Thursday, give or take, uh, you know, basically Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the temperatures start to drop again going into your weekend. All right, let's take a look at those fires out there. The Boise fire is now 72% contained as of last night. We're taking a look now at the Park fire at 98% containment. Now, some of you might be asking, well, what's the deal, right? What's going on with that other fire that we heard about? Well, let's take you to it. Uh, let's take a look at watch duty and the, the Centerville fire, as you can see here, kind of impacting quite the rural area. There were no um, evacuation wa warnings or even orders. So we take a look at the Centerville fire. It's at 59 acres at 40% containment. Now, based off of the officials, they are saying that, uh, actually, no, it looks like now it is, yes, yeah, now it's saying it's 60% contained. Um, and all forward progress of this fire, by the way, has been stopped. So I would be I wouldn't be too terribly concerned about this fire. It was quite a plume of smoke yesterday. I'm sure it, uh, it, I'm, I'm sure it scared a lot of people, but firefighters have certainly gotten a good handle on it. And that certainly is some very good news. Let's take a look at the winds out there right now. You can see they're fairly calm right now, about 10 miles per hour in Willows. But we look at the forecast for today. And yes, they're going to pick up a little bit this afternoon, but most likely they'll mainly stay below 16 miles per hour. However, still very dry out there. I'm expecting those single digits when we're talking about the relative humidity for the valley and many of the higher elevations as well. Now, what does that mean for our fire weather risk for today? Well, for the valley, we're in the moderate to high range. That's that yellow and some little bits of orange in there as well. Otherwise, low to moderate elsewhere in the higher elevations. Hey, take a look at Lake Orville cam right now. Sun is rising. It's turning out to be a gorgeous look out there. The birds are flying around, enjoying that beautiful sunrise. Taking a look at Lake Orville, North Four Bay. The winds are not blowing a whole lot there, looking like a glass lake. You can see that little bit of a breeze here, but beautiful shot there. Looks like a little bit of a dirt or haze smoke in the sky there, off in the distance. Looking at Main Street Chico on Highway 32. Looks like traffic is what, with little traffic there is. Holding off there, you can see the traffic at the stoplight there. 
They should be coming up here on Highway 99 at Neal Road here shortly. So yeah, I mean, traffic kind of as usual as we'd expect for this time of the day. And of course, many of us are heading back to work after a three-day work week. Or after a three-day weekend, <laughs> three-day work week, that'd be even better. Sundial Bridge, uh, Highway 44, Sundial Bridge Drive at Highway 44. Looks like things are flowing smoothly there as well. Well, before we get to that here, uh, let's take a look and see how everybody's doing out there this morning and just checking in with everybody. And you can see, of course, we've got uh, Dorothy Davis checking in. Let's see how she's doing this morning. Let's put her, pop her up on the screen here. She's saying good morning from Reading. We've also got Allie Dunn, who is saying good morning in, in all caps. So she's shouting it at us. Good morning. Yes, it is. It is a good morning. I'm looking outside right now. Not much of a breeze, sunny skies. Not too terribly hot just yet, but that will be changing here. Uh, we've got some of our regulars here. We've got Richard Hardin saying good morning, Mike. Beautiful morning. Yeah, absolutely was. Did some of you, did many of you out there have that three-day weekend? If so, did you have a good one? I know I, um, of course, had at least a weekend off. Meteorologist Brian Wilson was filling in for the weekend, obviously, or doing his duties as the weekend meteorologist on Saturday and Sunday. Still had to work on, uh, on Labor Day, but I just didn't do Coffee with Kruger. I did your morning update, your, noon up, your afternoon update, and, of course, your evening update. But you know, over the weekend, so we, we drove out uh, to the coast. It was a quick trip out there. I uh, drove out Saturday morning to the coast and we stayed in Arcata. Um, and we went to, the, of course, the market there. Um, we went to, of course, Saturday. Was it Saturday? What day do we go? Yeah, it was Saturday. Then we drove out to Ferndale and went to the fair. Um, and we checked out a few of the exhibits there. It was really cool to see a lot of people out there. It's a, quite an event. It was a little foggy out there on, on Saturday, uh, but things cleared up beautifully on Sunday. But it was really neat to check out the fair. Here's one thing. You know, I like to eat healthy. But my son Aiden had his eyes on the mini donuts. And said, all right, let's go get some mini donuts. We got the bucket family, family one. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to try one. Oh, they were, I don't know what it is about those donuts, but they are unbelievably delicious. They are, oh my gosh, they are so good. I, it was like potato chips. I couldn't eat just one. So uh, it was my little cheat, if you will. And man, they were good. They were so good. Uh, for any of you who've had those donuts, you probably know what I'm talking about. They put the just right amount of sugar on them, the cinnamon that was on them. And of course, the dough itself, it wasn't just the, the sugar and cinnamon, but the dough. I don't know what it is they put in that dough, but man, holy cow, it's good. All right, I got to stop thinking about it because I'm going to want more. It's, it's like a drug. I tell you what, it's like a total drug. So addicting, so addicting. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. And then after the fair, we went and just kind of hung out in Ferndale. What a great, quaint little community out there. And we checked out a lot of the local shops. Um, we went to the historic uh, cemetery and checked that out. Uh, really cool, interesting history behind that as well. And then, of course, we, as I mentioned, we stayed in Arcata. Now, Sunday, uh, we woke up and... Actually, no, it was also on Saturday. We went to Moonstone uh, Beach. My son does uh, wakeboarding, so he got to do the wakeboarding. It was a lot of fun. Oh, man, he has a good time. He's getting really good at it, too. Uh, and then we stayed the night in Arcata, came back to Moonstone Beach, and it was a mess. So many people out there. I actually ended up, it was so bad, I couldn't find parking. I said, you know what? I'm just going to drop Aiden and Sadie off and Nessie off at the beach. And I'm going to head on to the supercharger for Tesla. And I charged the, charged it up. I, you know, did a little bit of shopping. And then when they were ready, I came to pick them up. But man, Moonstone Beach, man, it is a very popular beach, especially on a holiday weekend. So it was quite a mess. Uh, but um, they had it more fun out there. And then we, we drove back. Um, and for those of you that follow me on Facebook, I, I did a little video on a, 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 a slight... I want to call it adventure, but mishap, if you will, on the drive back. Uh, everything's fine. Everyone's fine. Uh, but just go to my Facebook page um, and you can watch that video and you can see what I'm talking about. I don't want to dwell on it too much. All right. Uh, we got Krista who is talking about those donuts. And uh, yes, she also agrees. Those donuts were your Thursday sweet. Yes, they were. Although I did have a Thursday sweet before that as well. 
Um, Tracy is saying, you're making me hungry. Yeah, I know. Because those donuts are so unbelievably good. Um, so, yeah. So it was fun. We had a good, we had a good, you know, short trip out to the coast. Uh, I, you know, the thing is, I can never get enough of it. I, I could stay out there for a week, two weeks. Um, heck, heck, even live out there. I tell you what, it's gorgeous out there on the coast. But I love it here. I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon. All right. Well, tell you what. Um, before we get to the forecast here, there is a segment that we're kind of wrapping up with some uh, with uh, Cottonwood Vet and Small Animal Clinic here. And uh, so we did, uh, we're trying to do that. We, we started doing this segment. We've got six total now, uh, but it's called the Vet Education Corner. And it's essentially uh, going to the Cottonwood Veterinary Small Animal Clinic and learning about your pets, different things that can impact them and how you can help give, keep them happy and healthy. So this week we learn about allergies, the different types of allergies, allergies and how they can impact your pets. So check it out. Hello everyone, Mike Kruger from Weather NorCal and this is another Vet Education Corner. With me right now, I have got Dr. Zufall from Small Cottonwood Small Animal Clinic. And today we're gonna to be talking about allergies. Now, we all, you know, we all have our own allergies, but how are, are pets different? How does that all work? Yeah, so pets have allergies just like you and I. Um, a lot of the times you're gonna see it as licking paws, general itchiness, mm -hmm. um, hair loss, and ear infections. Those okay, are the most so common things. kind of the four main things that we're yep. talking about right there. Yep. So what are some of the things that animal, I don't wanna say owners, right? Animal yep. parents, what can they look out for uh, with, their, with their pets? Yeah, so the most common things I hear are that my dog won't stop shaking their head, keeps me up all night, or that incessant paw licking. Mm. You know, everyone knows the sound of their pet licking, licking, licking yeah, their paws. Yeah, yeah. That's typically what we're gonna see when they come in for. Okay, so when they come in, you so they determine that their pet may have uh, some kind of allergy. Mm -hmm. So they bring them in. What are some of the things that you're gonna, are there different medications that they're gonna end up usually getting? Yeah, so a lot of the times, by the time owners bring them in because they're just like, I can't handle this anymore. Um, we're treating secondary infections. So antibiotics, steroids, things like that, we treat that and then we can get to the root cause, which is most of the time allergies. So we can send you home with lots of different things to help your pet feel more comfortable. Medicated shampoos are great, topical creams, tablets to go home for long-term allergy therapy or even injections, which is a lot nicer for pet mm. parents who don't wanna pill their pets every day. No fun giving your pet uh, yeah. a pill. Um, and th there are different uh, things that can cause the allergies as well, right? What are some of the things yeah. that uh, people should look out for? So there's four types of allergies. The most common is gonna be flea allergy. So pets who are flea allergic, they get fleas and fleas make everyone itchy, but flea allergic pets are allergic to flea saliva. So they're gonna be itchy mm. and they're gonna have a wild overreactivity. The second type of allergy is gonna be environmental allergy. So just like you and I, they have allergies to molds, pollens, things like that. Um, a third one is food allergy. Everyone loves a good food allergy. And then mm -hmm. third, contact allergy. So just like you and I, we touch poison oak, we get a rash, same sort of things can happen in our pets. So they can get poison oak as well? Well, they can't get poison oak. That is one thing, they can't get it. Oh, that's good. But <laughs> they can rub up against a plant, a bush, uh, or even certain household products can cause allergies to their skin. All right, anything else you can think of? No, it's pretty I straightforward. I think we got it all covered. Yeah, yeah. very straightforward. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Nice. Zuval, for all that great advice about allergies. We'll see you next time. You know, I gotta tell you, they really know their stuff over there, Cottonwood Vet and Small Animal Clinic. They are amazing. Anytime I've had an opportunity to speak with those uh, veterinarians out there, uh, they just, they really know their stuff and they love, they love, love, love the animals. And I'm gonna tell you, they run a tight ship over there. Uh, anytime I've been in there, uh, you got people in there and you, I can just, I've, I've done the observations. Uh, they, they get people in and out, uh, but that doesn't mean they don't spend the time that they need with your pet. Uh, so, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for a, a veterinarian, check it out. And they're one of the few that actually have just basically a walk-in. You don't have to, you know, call ahead of time and reserve time. Now, obviously, you're going to have better luck. It's going to be much smoother and faster for you. But they do walk-in visits as well. So be sure to check them out. They're there in Cottonwood on Gas Point Road uh, over there at the Holiday, um, Holiday Quality Foods uh, shopping area. And you'll kind of see them right there on the right side, just to the right of the store. So check it out. 
Uh, again, they're they're really uh, <laughs> they're really awesome. I, I'm laughing because, um, of course, you know the big joke was uh, we got Catherine Schmidt saying, uh, "Good morning, Speedy." Yeah. Again, watch watch my video. Again, I don't want to dwell too much on it here, but um, yeah, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Uh, you know, I had a little chuckle too with a buddy of mine who is a, an ex police officer, and we were kind of talking about it as well. And and um, yeah, we had some fun with it. You know, it is what it is, and uh, you, you, sometimes you get caught, sometimes you don't. All right, so tell you what, let's get to the detailed forecast here. Of course, as you know, without our sponsors, Weather Norkel would not exist, and without our sponsors, and without Wind River Resort and Casino. Coffee with Kruger would not exist either. So just want to, of course, mention our sponsor, Wind River Resort and Casino. And you, that's where you can enjoy friendly service, a wide variety of specials and promotions, plus all of your favorite slots and table games made possible by Wind River Resort and Casino. All right, here are a look at your temperatures right now. And it's you know, not too bad out in Redding and out in Chico in the upper 50s there, 60 degrees for Oroville, uh, 63 degrees out in Red Bluff and 60 in Willows. Uh, pretty chilly this morning up in Alturas at 38, 37 for Bernie, 48 for Susanville, 46 for Mount Shasta City, 45 Wairica, and there are those upper 40s, low 50s out along the coast this morning. All right, so here's your headlines. We got a warming trend this week and it's significant. We're already noticing it today. We're gonna to get up to about 100 degrees in the valley and even hotter than that in the days to come. We're talking about triple digits, but not as hot as we go into the weekend. In fact, the second half of the weekend, early next week, not nearly as hot. But we're also talking about the chance for showers and thunderstorms later this week for many of the higher elevations. All right, let's get into the winds. Right now, not that bad. They're mainly below 10 miles per hour. For today, they're not going to be that bad either. Mostly below 15 miles per hour. Not only today, but tomorrow. And not to mention, even your Thursday, those winds aren't going to be that bad. So we don't have to worry too much about the winds. What we do have to worry about, though, is the low humidity. It's still going to be very dry out there in the single digits today. It'll continue to be in the single digits for the valley eastward in the, in the eastern mountains as we go into your Wednesday and Thursday. I don't expect to see much change there either. Still very dry. And when you couple that with the fact that it's going to be very hot, that is going to elevate the fire danger. So today, yes, it's hot. Just again, the winds aren't that much of a factor. Moderate to high risk in the valley. But now we're in the high to very high in the valley. Central Siskiyou County in the high to very high. And then in the uh, moderate category for the Eastern Mountains. And it looks like that'll be the case again going into your Thursday as well. Let's talk about the heat. There's a look at the heat advisor for Western Siskiyou County for Thursday for the valley and the surrounding foothills for Wednesday through Friday. Temperatures are going to be 105, 106, 107, not quite 110, but you can see the peak will be on Thursday and the temperatures start to dip after that. I'm expecting that by the time we get into the second half of the weekend early next week, right around normal, and then we'll be actually well below normal. Quite a dip in our temperatures most likely is what it's looking like here by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. Not this week, but next week. Now, the reason all of this is happening, the reason why we're going up and back down again is take a look at this. That's the cooler air that we saw on Labor Day. This is the, the ridge of high pressure building in, peaking on Wednesday, Thursday, even Friday. And even though this is going to start to shift down to the south and east and we have this trough moving in on Friday, this is not a cold trough of low pressure. This is just going to create some instability that could help to pr produce some mountain showers and thunderstorms, even on Saturday. So the warmer air, warmer slash hot air, will still be in place even Saturday. But then that moves on out. We've got this trough of low pressure coming in by the second half of this upcoming weekend into early next week. That will push eastward, push that heat down to our south and east. As a result, we see a nice, nice dip in our temperatures here for next week. But we've got to get through this week first. There's the area of low pressure responsible for our cooler weather that we did see on your Labor Day. That's scooting on out of here, and that high pressure is building back in. So let's take a look at Futurecast. Now, the next several days, we're still looking at dry conditions. Even the coast will be looking at plenty of sunshine here for today, for your Wednesday, plenty of sunshine for 
everywhere else in Northern California. And we'll go ahead and repeat that here for your Thursday. That fog, really that fog bank staying well off the coast over the next several days. That's going to keep temperatures warmer there. Now by Friday, the long range forecast models are having a hard time with this. Uh, we're seeing the, the, you know, the location of where the thunderstorms pop up different with each forecast model run. But that's why I'm kind of what I call a broad brush forecast. I even said that yesterday. Inland areas, Trinity, basically all of the mountains and inland has a chance for showers, thunderstorms on Friday. I'm keeping it dry in the valley on Friday. Now, Saturday, Futurecast was showing showers and thunderstorms for the mountains again. Not so much the case today. I'm keeping the chance at least for the Sierra here on Saturday, but it looks like the chances are getting a little bit slimmer on Saturday. Then Sunday, it's dry. Remember that storm system coming up from the north? Well, that's going to ride to our north. We may get the tail end of that coming in on Tuesday, especially for the coast, uh, and then eventually maybe Wednesday kind of pushing through. Now, I do need to mention this. Early this morning, before this model came out, this low pressure system was actually diving down to the south at this time. That's impacting where the rain will be and how cool it will get as well. But bottom line, this disturbance, this area of low pressure, is going to be here. We just don't know exactly where it's going to be for next week. I mean, we're, we're looking out at next Tuesday. We're looking at a week from today. So a lot can happen between now and then. But bottom line, again, I do expect to see those cooler temperatures coming in with that. All right, so there's a look at our wave heights for today. Not much of an issue. No advisories for today as far as small correct advisories are concerned. And those wave heights will be dropping for your Wednesday. So there's your marine forecast for today. Northwest winds at about 10 to 15 knots. Your waves from the northwest at 3 feet at 7 seconds. And from the northwest at 4 feet at 11 seconds. As I mentioned, no advisories, no small correct advisories or hazardous seas warnings or anything like that. All right, here's your detailed Trinity County neighborhood forecast. Highway 299 corridor. Be sure to watch your speed when you are driving down Highway 299, especially during Labor Day weekend. That's all I got to say. Temperatures, you know, mid-90s, give or take here for today uh, along Highway 299 there. There you can see on Highway 3, Coffee Creek Trinity Center around 91, 96 out towards Douglas City and Lewiston, about 92 degrees. Take you south, 93 for Hay Fork, a little bit cooler. Uh, some of these are on those higher elevations, so temperatures tend to be a little bit cooler there. Mad River, 86, 89 degrees for a high today in Ruth. Now for southern Humboldt County, Red Crest, 85, not even Honeydew. There you can see Garberville, about 95. Shelter Cove, 75 degrees. And look at that. I mean, we're seeing a lot of sunshine along the coast here for today. Ferndale, beautiful, 72 degrees. 75 in Fortuna. How about Rio Dell at about 76 degrees? Take you up north, 77 degrees for Blue Lake, 69 for Eureka and Trinidad, about 77 degrees. Up north, 81 Smith River, around 70 for Crescent City, Oric about 75, but oh man, it's warm inland. We're up to 104 out in Orleans. Here's your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast for the Highway 96 corridor, mainly in the mid-90s there. Your I-5 corridor, temperatures in the low 90s for your daytime highs. There's that chance for showers and possible thunderstorms here for your Friday. Taking a look at Scott Valley, 90 in Fort Jones, 89 for Etna, and 88 degrees out in Callahan. And we take you out to Central and eastern Siskiyou County. 86 for Weed, Mount Shasta about 88, a bit warmer in Dunsmere at about 92, 82 for Tule Lake and 82 degrees in McDowell. Here's your Modoc County neighborhood forecast, Newell about 81, basically low to maybe some mid 80s out there. So yes, it's getting pretty warm in some spots here, but not as warm in some of these higher elevations. 88 degrees for a high today in Bernie, 91 for Montgomery Creek, 80 in Old Station. Now again, notice even in the Eastern Mountains for Bernie, I've got that chance in there for you for Friday. And we take you out to Chester and Lake Elm, uh, excuse me, towards uh, Lassen Park. Got that continued chance here on Saturday as well. Again, I'm going to be fine tuning the chances for showers and thunderstorms here for all of the mountains as we approach the weekend, but that's what it's looking like for now. Uh, so again, Susanville, but Paradise, I don't have any showers and thunderstorms for you over the next seven days. We take a look at your Valley neighborhood forecast in the south and essentially about 100 degrees. That's kind of the baseline here. It's going to be give or take. Some areas upper 90s, other areas maybe just above 100 with 101 for the city of Shasta Lake and Redding, 100 Palisadro. But Lakehead, about 96, and, and uh, Whiskey Town, about 96 degrees as well. So there's a look at your seven-day outlook for Reading, and it's not Labor Day on Friday. Come on now. I guess I just didn't check that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's do this, because we can do this. I hate it when I do that. No problem. Boom. 
and gone. There it is. Wouldn't it be cool if Labor Day was on Friday? Then you'd have another three-day weekend. <laughs> but that's not the case. Um, so yeah, there you go, folks. Uh, let's take a look at that one more time. All right, so there's your 7-day forecast for Reading. Uh, 106. So basically, the peak of this heat wave is during the uh, heat advisory, right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then Saturday, we're dropped back down to a cool 100. All right, 95 degrees on Sunday and Monday. A high of about... 94 degrees. All right. Uh, oh, we've got good morning, Mike, from Chris at True Value Hardware. All right. Which one? Um, Chris from True Value Hardware. Is that the one in Weaverville? And if so, are you the owner? That's kind of a cool... I love these. Uh, some of these... Um, in these historic towns like Weberville, for example, and you still have, uh, looks like that location of where the old hardware store is. But I believe that's when you're talking about here, uh, Chris. Let me know which one you're, you're, um, you're chiming in from. Is it Weberville? Let's see, where's the other True Value? Um, where have I seen True Value? I th Palisadro. Yes, of course, I've seen the one in Palisadro too. All right, good. Good to know. All right, folks. So uh, if you're in the Palisadro area, you know where you need to go. Go to the True Valley Hardware Store and say hi to Chris. Tell him I said hi for you. Okay. Uh, good morning. I have some errands to run in Weaverville today. That is coming in from Kimberly. Well, that is always fun, right? You know, errands sometimes aren't so fun, but sometimes it's also nice to have something to do, right? So go out, get in the car, pack things up, get ready to go and run some errands. Uh, and sometimes, especially if you live in these smaller communities like Weaverville, sometimes if you got to run some big errands, you may have to head out to Reading, for example, to do that. So uh, good luck and enjoy your time out, um, Kimberly. Uh, we've also got Sandra saying good morning, Mike, and enjoy your coffee. I appreciate that. Uh, Kimberly saying you're out there in Lewiston. Ooh. Yeah, you definitely have a distance to go if you have, I don't know if you can run all of your errands in Lewiston or if you have to go to Weaverville or if you have to go to Reading, I'm not sure, but uh, good luck. Enjoy your time out and uh, be sure if you're heading out to Reading that you have water because it's going to be a lot hotter in, in Reading than it will be in Lewiston. That is for sure. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us today. So glad you could uh, tune in this morning. Of course, I'll be back here Wednesday morning on Coffee with Kruger at 7 a.m. We have got um, any special programming on, on Wednesdays that we do? No, we don't. It'll just be another regular day right here on Coffee with Kruger. Well, once again, thank you all so much for watching this morning. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee with Kruger right here at 7 a.m. Have a great day, everyone.